I like this one because I just want to bring up a certain part of uh, my life. Y you were there for uh, some of it, Daniel. Um, Turn up group. It, Go ahead. Fan, yeah. yeah. Asked, how was Hollywood Valley life? Uh, they said during Neds, but I'm going to take it after Neds. And they said, mm -hmm. any cool parties or only in LA moments? And I just want to take the moment to share. Go so ahead. third season of Neds, my family and I found this house to rent in the Hollywood Hills. Perfect. Um, we were just going to rent it for six months. Uh, it used to be owned by Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He was two owners before us, so we started renting it from the owners who got it from him. Like, that was just cool L.A. history. We're in Anthony Kiedis' house in the Hollywood Hills. It was up near the Hollywood sign. It was this fun, like, just great house for me and my family. We thought we'd be there six months. Then the owners wanted to sell it, and my parents kind of loved it so much and couldn't super afford it but they were like we have to take this house like we can't let go of this house it's such a special property um so my parents bought that house in the third season of neds and so post neds like during neds we would go up there and have we'd go up there and have yep. parties post in the backyard them. and but post once we yeah. got older because during neds we were i don't know we were all little baby children but yeah. post neds up into my teenage years I don't think my parents had ever left me alone in that house for like a, a night. I just, they like never went on trips without us or something. But then when I was, I think I was 18 and they left for like 10 days on a vacation and me and all my friends knew like, oh, it's on, like <laughs> it's on. And literally oh, we had like a week of like Hollywood movie style ragers. teen party beer ragers, pong, bro. beer pong Great. in the house, which it's was so dumb. I never yeah. did that again. We, we had a backyard, so that's where the beer pong goes. We were playing it in the fucking dining room. Yep. I could not get the beer smell out of that house for, for like weeks. So when my parents came home, they were like, mm, "Yeah, you've been in here." But mm -hmm. they knew at that point I was eighteen. Like, as long as like we didn't trash the house, I. I I didn't tell them I was having the party. When they smelled the beer, it's like they weren't stoked, but obviously, like they weren't, they weren't like coming down on me for it because yeah. we we took care of the house. We like cleaned it up after. Yeah. It was all good. But but I still remember for for they were gone ten days, so we did like two weekends of just fucking lit. Literally, like I feel like hundreds be. of kids and all of Hollywood that time, would come through. Yeah, That's I mean. True. Uh, uh, Vinny and Kyle from Phantoms, dope mm. electronic uh, act. They were there. I think Vinny like spilled some wine and Drew like got on him about it. Of like respect the fucking house, uh, bro. Yeah. Um, I think Nick Braun was there. Yeah, usually. Uh, yeah. yeah, Nick Braun. Like, man, if you coulda, if you coulda been there, if you bro. coulda seen it, and it was, it was kind of like phones weren't as everything wasn't being documented. Oh yeah, then. we were just. Living I, I don't in think the I moment, have bro. any photo from those experiences, like Dang. any. And wow. it's kind of beautiful, yeah. but I wish I could see some images from those parties because they were just, it was too many people. Bro, I, we packed my fucking crazy. house. It was so fun. It was, it was so epic, fun. Man. We would be on top of the roof, everything. I smoked my first joint on top of your roof, man. I remember Ooh. that. Yeah. That wasn't during that party, but that was just me and Daniel. <laughs> it was beautiful, man. It was beautiful. We were like Changed looking at the Hollywood sign, just talking about life. Daniel was a good boy, right? Damn. Daniel was a good Christian boy with ideas about right and wrong. Yeah. And then as you do as a teenager, you start to stretch these boundaries. And uh, I got to smoke Daniel out for his first time. And man, it was beautiful. It was lit. It was lit. It was Imagine. literally lit. Yeah. yeah. Good times, man. Good times. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. I just want to share that. But, but. And Daniel, have you smoked since? <laughs> uh, marijuana, the marijuanas, yeah. Never yeah. again. Once you pop, you just can't stop. <laughs> No. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm more of an edible guy mm. these yeah. days. Yep. Yeah. Mm. But uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Weed has a, a special place, you know. But you got to get things done in life, so you're not always gonna want to choose that, you know. Yeah. And I guess it's it's no longer just a California thing. I guess more of these states are like legalizing it and everything. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's a nice alternative to all the other horrible, um, you know, vices you yeah. can have. Yeah, I think in balance, it can serve an amazing. It's an amazing. Oh yeah, thing it can serve an amazing purpose at yeah. times, and sometimes it can be a problem. Yeah, how about yourself? You ever interacted with the marijuana? The um, cannabis. <laughs> Let me think. You skipped that and just went right to. <laughs> <laughs> no, every night ended with the can of buy. Yeah, nice. Yep. And like even uh, like we were at part like there was a young Hollywood at the time. Like it, it was a small community of us out here living this experience. So they're definitely not just at my house. Like you would end up at parties that like all of us kids, anyone who was on Disney and Nick at that time, we all had some overlap somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. And like, 
and any teenager, you're going to parties as a teenager sometimes. And mm -hmm. like, this was no different. Yep. Yeah. We'd all end up somewhere sometime. Oh, oh and God, I'm just trying to did you just, my did you just back. fart? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I swear you just Where ripped ass, manners? dude. Yeah. I swear you just turned and just like pulled a fart out of you your ass. Like yeah, right. <laughs> Dug deep I for that one. It's, it sounded like you, you really like. You dare take your face away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I have my lower like back. Ass. I'm your lower ass. ass. Your lower back. Your. <laughs> my ass. lower right. You are, It's right here. It's right. I know where there. the anus is, Lindsay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> know where it's located. It's I know where like farts painful. are made. Oh my god. Um, Andy M ninety four asks Carmelo Anthony as una gran persona. Is he a good person? Oh, you met him. Yeah, for he the, was on our show. Yeah. Sure. He was on our show for an episode. Uh, right yeah, on. of course. I just wanted. Turn up. Yeah, of course. Carmelo Anthony. Who came on El está un gran person. Sí. Oh. Sure. Go on. Bang bang. Oh, this is a Ned's question. Glad Fitman asked. Glad Fitman. What are the capabilities slash limitations of the little chip on Cookie's glasses? <laughs> Ooh, you know, I, I'll, I'll dive I'll let, deep. Yeah, I'll let you answer that. So, uh, those glasses have all of the capabilities and limitations of Google Glass, mm. which came out. Uh, Cookie was able to surf the web, all right, so he could access whatever information he wanted, you know, kind of like Wikipedia. He could just search some terms. He could also hack into uh, any type of electronic transmissions that were happening anywhere else. So that was a great tool to have. He could hijack GPS, man. So much stuff. And this little viewfinder, I mean, or this little thing he was twiddling was like the mouse, you know. There we go. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I've heard people ask, I think people got confused that we reference Cookie as a cyborg so often that like, I feel like people ask me like, was he like actually a cyborg? Oh yeah. Like, no, uh. that's how we referenced him because he used technology yeah. and had augmented yeah. reality with it. Like you're not an actual robot. Yeah, what is that, a meta human? What would you call someone like, he's like, is he? He's like, is he? Where do you plug is him he? up? Where do you plug him up? <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, that was some great stuff, man. Yeah, you weren't supposed to be like an actual robot. You know what I mean? I can't reference one person on this because I, I've actually seen a lot of people asking something along the lines of how do I deal with a breakup? How do I get over an ex? Like there's like a bunch in there where people are asking for that time, which is something we're going to go through many times in our life. But how do I deal with that time where I've been broken up with or a breakup, getting over someone. Um, yeah, I, I will start and say every uh, breakup and especially the bigger ones from bigger relationships in my life um, have been really sacred times after that breakup. Painful, raw, but there's something about that heartbreak mm -hmm. that kind of clarifies what matters in my life. There's something that like, if you actually slow down trying to escape that heartbreak, but just kind of come back to yourself um, and feel it, I, I have always found like this truth comes back to me. This voice comes back to me. Cause in the relationship we were creating a we, there was a we and I was doing something in relation to this other person and it was beautiful and great. And parts of letting go of that and grieving that are, are terrible and it hurts. Um, and it's uncomfortable in the transition. However, I'm always coming back to myself after a breakup. I'm not less of me. I'm coming back into myself of not being ref. I'm not referencing this other person anymore. And um, yeah, I think for me, it's it's like it's not looking back. It's not trying to hold on. It's feeling everything that comes up because there's a whole process. I mean, however long you were in that relationship. I don't know what the math is, but there's a certain amount of time where you're still going to be processing that relationship. However long I thought you it were was together, like double the time that you were together. No, 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 mm. no. I, I thought it was half. I thought it was the opposite. Oh, that's that's I think what I, I think mean. it's like half, yeah. however long you were together, half, half of, of that it mm -hmm. is going to be this process of uncoupling and you have to let the feelings come that come. You're going to pass by all sorts of things that remind you of the good times, all the things you did together. And part of that is letting those feelings come, but also like, man. I am so, I, I just send myself during those times so much love even from here because I, I had to put myself back together after each one and I really expanded after each major breakup. So like embrace the time, take your time back, do things that are, are good for you. Don't run from the feelings all the time, sit in them sometimes. 
Uh, I think you have to strike a balance between of like distracting yourself from the pain and feeling it. Cause I think you gotta do both. <laughs>